Here are five tips for decorating your home like a designer. I'm Olivia Smith and this is Get Savvy with Social. My husband and I recently moved to a new home and not only did we decorate it, but we also remodeled it before we moved in. I learned a lot about design. I have no background as an interior designer, but I did spend months studying up on style, on paint, on floors, on things I never thought I would know much about and now I know a little too much about. So here's how we decorated our home and what you need to know before you decorate or remodel yours. Tip one. Spend a lot of time looking at pictures. We looked at things on Pinterest, Google, magazines. We looked everywhere as much as we could at homes. And really studying photos and images is really helpful in helping you pick out what you like and what you think would work for your home. Our home is a Spanish style home, so I took that into consideration when looking at different images. I spent time looking at Pinterest boards of Spanish style homes, I googled modern Spanish homes, I googled old Spanish homes, I spent a lot of time looking up Spanish style. So if you have a theme or something like that in mind, that can help you get ideas moving. Even if you don't have a specific theme or style, you know, look up things that you think that you would like, right? White interior kitchen, black paint for the exterior of the house. Whatever it is, whatever little details, look at as many images as you can. Something I learned, don't just look at the photo, right? Study it and look at the little details in the photo. If something is drawing you to a photo and you might think, I like this, I wanna go with this color walls or I wanna go with this type of floor, also look at what else they have in the photo. What little things make that photo really speak to you? And that's when I started discovering different pictures hung on the walls, different things placed on bookshelves. So it's those little touches that make something really cozy and cute. Another reason looking at images and photos is so important is because you wanna know what you like before actually going to stores like Home Depot. We made that mistake and we went without really knowing what we wanted and we were completely overwhelmed and left the store with nothing. It was no progress at all. So the next time before we actually went to Home Depot, we spent some time studying up and this way when we went in, we knew what types of floors we were actually looking for. We didn't know exactly what we wanted, but we had a much smaller range. We also had spent time looking at images in real life. We drove around different neighborhoods we liked and we studied the paint on windows, the paint on front doors, and that ended up helping us choose our paint for our home. Tip two, set a budget and stick to it. It is really easy to go over budget and spend way more money than you're hoping to spend. So what we did before we did anything is we sat down, we wrote out how much money we wanted to spend on the home, and then we spent time budgeting. Every little thing we did, I tracked. And together we were able to see what we were able to afford and what had to wait for later. We also spent time comparing prices and this was key. We were able to save literally thousands of dollars by comparing prices. And keeping track of your money along the way is going to save you a lot of stress and headaches down the line. Tip three, go with your gut. If you like something, go for it. And my recommendation is to start small, start with a sample. So let's say you love a specific type of floor and you're getting mixed advice from people, you know, take a few different samples and put them down in the space and really look at it and think if it looks good. We painted a ton of different paint on the walls before deciding. So really go with your gut and yes, don't make crazy big decisions on a whim, but pick what you like, it's your home. Also keep in mind though on the flip side, it's something you may wanna resell. So taking into consideration what works generally may be helpful. Tip four, listen to others. I know too many cooks in the kitchen generally is a bad idea, but for us, it actually was really, really helpful. I asked everyone's advice. I asked the real estate agent, I asked my parents, I asked Michael's parents, I asked friends, I asked other family members, and taking advice was wonderful for us. So what we did was we compiled a list. Someone had recommended a breakfast nook. Someone had recommended a cutting board for one of our actual tabletops in the kitchen. So while we have quartz covering a lot of our countertops, one countertop is actually a wood cutting board. And that was someone's idea. I looked on TikTok and I also found ideas like a microwave drawer, which I had never considered before. Someone suggested a wine fridge. And all of these little things were really, really helpful in helping us make decisions too. Michael's sister had redone her house. She had excellent ideas for what type of floors we should use, the drop lights in the kitchen. A number of people gave us such, such good ideas. Our handyman, he even recommended what types of blinds we should get in the house. So I would say, 
take everyone's advice. Write everything down. You don't have to use it, but taking advice from other people who own homes, who know the situation you're in, I'd say is key to making some decisions you may not have otherwise thought of on your own. Tip five, practice patience and visualize a plan. What we did before moving in was I actually sketched out the whole house in every room and I put little pieces of furniture in there on my drawing so I kind of knew what I wanted where. And we ended up actually going with that plan that we sketched out. Yes, we erased and moved a few things, but visualizing it before we moved in was key because when the movers were here, it was very easy to say, put this there, put this there. So mapping it out is a good choice. And also practice patience. I am not a very patient person, but I was extremely patient with this house. I gave us time before moving in. I gave us time when doing our research and our planning, and it really truly paid off. In terms of practicing patience, for example, too, there were a few things that we either were gonna to wait to do in the future and some costly things we did hold off on, but then there were smaller things that I thought, if I don't do it now, I'm not ever gonna do it. So I gave myself a little bit more time to get those things done. And in the end, we're really, really pleased with our home. So that's it, five tips for decorating your home like a designer. I'm Olivia Smith, this is Get Savvy With Social and head to GetSavvyWithSocial.com for more.